In Salisbury, obviously your first winter um, as one of Sussex's two head coaches, um, very different from, from any other pre-season for, for obvious reasons. How's it all been going? I, I think you mentioned that they're just a different, uh, <laughs> um, but also um, makes it a bit simpler actually um, when it, you have to adapt and the rules are set in place via higher purposes than we are. Um, I'd never thought that Boris would be part of my uh, off-season plans and uh, doing that, but um, look, we're loving it. Um, obviously, we got in in November. Um, we sort of had some loose plans, but then every time we do a plan, um, we replan, and then once we've done that, we replan again. So we've learned to uh, be adaptable and try and get that across to the players. Um, but also respectful of, I think it's good for the players to realise, you know, there are things out there other than sport and we have to be respectful for what the rest of the country is going through. Grateful, obviously, for the amazing job the NHS have done and respectful of um, the public around us um, <laughs> doing everything right in lockdown. So um, there's been some good discipline that's been set off the pitch, let alone um, with training itself. And you mentioned adaptability. I guess that's almost the key thing you're looking for when you go out in the middle, isn't it? Is people being able to to adapt. And so if you if they're having to do it in the in the pre season training, then it's gonna it's gonna serve them well come come the start of competitive cricket. Yeah, I mean, look, just sort of go back on the planning. Um, obviously, Boris said we can't travel anywhere. Um, you don't want anything to do with South Africa. So obviously, the last two years the the side have been going, or the squad have been going to Cape Town. Um, so it's ironic the first time I'm available to go to Cape Town. Um, it's not happening. <laughs> but actually, uh, believe it or not, I am, in the big scheme of things, I am a big fan of Cape Town, I will uh, admit. But I, I'm not sure always, and this is just from past experience as, as a player and a coach, whether it is always the right thing to do, to go to somewhere that's really hot, different pitch conditions, you're training in short sleeve shirt on conditions that's not going to be very different from when you get back. Um, I think it has these values for team bonding and bringing people together and you know you're probably going to get definite training. Um, but if I had my option, which ultimately you say we've had restrictions, but I'm a big fan of having the marquee up over the nets, um, which we've been in now for the last two weeks, that would be my choice over Cape Town every single time. So if I'm still in a job, that means the players agree with me. But then if they prefer to be in Cape Town, they'll be lobbying before the season starts for uh, to meet me out because I prefer the marquee <laughs> to uh, Cape Town. Or, or it might even be the performance director who prefers Cape Town <laughs> more than <laughs> and prefers that rather than a marquee. I don't know. Um, but it actually simplified the winter planning, knowing that we were going to have it in place from, we got it in from March the 1st, we got it for the whole month. We were hoping to get it in the last week in February, but it actually made the planning quite simple for it with workloads for bowlers and where we wanted the players to be to get onto the grass. Um, ben and his ground staff have been incredible, the surfaces as good as they can be. Um, and we've now had two weeks of absolutely outstanding practice so it has simplified it actually uh, that. And, and you talk about um, that March the 1st start in the marquee obviously you guys were working a bit before then but you did have uh, you know, a, a period where the players were still furloughed and, and so things started a bit later has that proved do you think that will have an impact on, on people's preparation or have you been able to catch up on, on that in the time since um, we, we, ironically I might come across as really relaxed and might look so I haven't got a plan at times, but actually we're really well organized. Um, we've worked really well as a coaching unit, but we also work really closely with the medical department of actually having real strategic planning on workloads and where we want them to be fitness wise, what we need the fast bowlers to have done, how many overs per week we need them up to by the time you get to a marquee. Today is a day off because we need to download them a little bit today. We had an easier week before we went into the marquee because we got the bowlers where we wanted them. We, Ollie Robinson, he's back. We need him in to need to get his workloads up. So 
the actual um, communication between medical staff, the data, and all the sort of ECB gut guidelines, plus the, my assistant um, for four day cricket, James Kirtley, and head coach for the T20 cricket. Oh my goodness, he is on it. Like, he's his spreadsheet data, that's his forte. He's incredible at all this stuff. So, if I'm not on it, trust me, I've got him, John, Matt, all that side, they're on me like you'll never believe. And so, talking about the discipline that we want on the pitch, we've had to have it from January the 1st, to be honest, or January the 4th when we came back. So, we cancelled coming back in as a group. Um, January and we decided not to coach the players in January as in not have contact with them because we just thought it was too risky um, so literally we had players coming into the ground and literally doing their gym session on their own and doing their workloads on their own which I believe shows amazing discipline individually and then they had to follow all the protocols we're doing a temperature we're doing that flow test um, all this sort of stuff and the organization we've done has shown massive discipline off the pitch and i think in previous quotes i've always talk about winning on the pitch is about winning off the pitch and, and we've been doing that massively i've seen a few of those um spreadsheets that james creates when you put them up on the you know on the on the group um and yeah the first thing to say is yeah they are they're in depth and it look you know looks super well organized one thing i noticed is um, you're getting the a lot of the pathway guys involved as well in these training sessions. What's what's the thinking behind that? Um, I, look, as I think time goes by, people have realised when we got into the role, um, we've me and James have got a re very clear strategic plan we have for the club. Um, we're very keen uh, where where we, the club is now. We're aware of where we are now, which is in four day cricket we're minus twelve, um, so we're bottom of the pile comfortably. Um, we know where we are. We're a top eight side presently in T20 cricket with the ability to win that. And so, but we, we're very clear of where we want to be in five years' time and how we get there. Uh, we have massive push on homegrown talent, but we don't want them just to play for Sussex. We want them to play for England. So if we are going to be competing in all competitions in five years' time, we've got to look at the 17 year olds, 16 year olds, 17 year olds, 18 year olds, 19 year olds, 20 year olds, and where they're going to be in five years time. So we see, we saw the success of it last year when the academy was mixing with the pros. Um, you saw the likes of Croker and Carson and Coles last year, but there's for every one of the Coles, there's an Ibrahim, there's a Lenham or two Lenhams. There's a, uh, Apocalyptum, there's an Ali or there's a uh, Nick Oxley. So we've got these players, um, that we're keeping an eye on and we want to have sustained success you know in five years time we want to be competing and the and the whole of members and <laughs> and supporters and sponsors that you know it's a club to really want to follow and compete in in every comp in five years time i guess that answers my next question which is you mentioned crocombe atkins carson um who all sort of made their breakthrough into the side last year uh, we signed Sean Hunt, another young bowler. I, I guess they're all going to be part of, of the plans from day one for this season. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, look, just to sort of clarify the, the Sean Hunt, he's somebody we've had an, an eye on for now two or three years. We've been aware, obviously, you play in academy leagues and we've been very aware, obviously, of Atkins, Crocombe, Carson, plus we've got Joe Saro and the Lennons, etc. But obviously you come up against opposition that you admire. And literally the top bowler uh, in the south part of this sort of competition has been Sean Hunt for the last two or three years. Um, so he's somebody we've, we've had our eye on. Um, he was also part with Crocombe and Atkins of the England Lions. And so their tour unfortunately got cancelled to Australia. So we literally got three of the, what should we say, highly rated most talented pace potential bowlers at sussex and hopefully to supporters um, and everybody who gets behind the club they can see the nucleus if you've got three of the best young bowlers with the best in my personal opinion best seam bowling coach in the country as well adding then the excitement of Jack Carson is probably the best young spinner in the country 
by far, adding then your Coles and your Lennons. Everybody should be hugely excited about that. But there has to be a really measured approach of how we can't expect to put them all in the side on April the 8th and go, there you go, we'll smash it. Um, we, we want them to then, you know, if Sean Hunt makes his debut for us or Jamie Atkins, we want it to be alongside an Ollie Robinson or a George Garton who's played a bit more or a Stuart Meeker. Um, we want them to be embedded slowly, if that makes sense. Because if you throw them all in together, you know, that's literally throwing them in the deep end. I won't say that they wouldn't perform, all of them together, but it just makes sense, the mixture of experience with youth. Um, I think most sports teams try and create that. So, um, And it's the same with Jack Carson, you know, burst onto the scene, but we have to be patient with this guy. You know, he's grown, he's skinny, he's trying to get stronger, he's never played a professional game in April. You know, we have to be patient. He, you know, it's not July, August like he bowled last year. He's um, learning new methods of how to get wickets early season. Um, it's been great actually to get Delray back early from Bermuda and to work with him as well. And we're really working on how these guys can take wickets in April to best serve Sussex. So um, it, it's exciting, hugely exciting. Um, but also you've got to be measured because... <laughs> you know, you could ruin players just as easily as you can promote them and get them in the right place where you want them to be in four or five years' time. And just talking quickly on, on those spinners, you know, the likes of Delray, Jack, obviously you've still got Will Beer as an experienced campaigner. You yourself are, are you know, a test leg spinner. Does that mean um, you're going to be asking head grounds person Ben to, to create sort of Taunton-style wickets down here or...? Uh, is it? Is it? What, what's your what's your relationship which, there? Which season Taunton wickets are you on about? Uh, <laughs> last season was when they were green, <laughs> or the year before. Uh, I'm talking about the Siderabad type of uh, of Taunton uh, wicket. I guess my question is. I, I mean, it's a really important question, mm. actually, Sam. Um, of which one I should answer. But uh, I've, um, part of obviously mine and James coming in as well is how much we want to communicate around the club. Um, we've been having meetings, Zoom meetings, our lads, with Ben, even though we've seen him in person, and his staff, I mean, who have done an amazing job with this marquee and what they're doing out on the ground. We know what pitch we want to play on, which time we're... James has already put his orders in for the T20 pitches. Um, I saw Ben have to fit around James because <laughs> he's more organised. Uh, but um, it's a, a massive policy and a thing that I believe in Big Star. I want to produce players... That not just play for Sussex, that play for England. And I think we have a duty as a club. So I say to Ben, if we were going to play a test match at Hove, I want you to prepare that pitch. Yeah. So I want it to be as flat as possible, as even grass as possible. So where batsmen, good batsmen score runs, quality spinners come into it. You know, first day they have to maybe hold, learn how to hold. You heard Joe Root the other day talking about you need spinners who can hold a game in the first innings but then bowl a side out in the second innings. Ollie Robinson, if he's playing on flat, test match-like pitches and is still taking wickets, England are going to be very interested in him. Phil Salt starts scoring runs on these sort of wickets. They're going to be interested in him. I think it's massively important, and I can assure you the message, the only message that I give to Ben is I just want as flat of pitches, test match light that you can produce. And he's happy with that. Plus, I want the net wickets to be exactly the same. Yeah. Because I believe that's what home advantage is. Luckily, Ben used to be uh, in charge of the net wickets. So it should be a seamless, because I can't see what's the point of having net wickets different to the middle wickets. Yeah, of course. Because that's what I call home advantage. Um, so I know I want teams to turn up Rather than going, huh, we're bowling first, I want teams to turn up and want to uh, bat first. So I just think that's the best way because it's not just about we want to produce cricketers for England as well. Can't argue with that. Um, obviously, we've had lots of players. But you might be able to. No. <laughs> At well, some stage, uh, you see green grass on it. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, exactly. laughs> um, so you're saying as a spinner, am I being biased by that? Or do you think I just believe this is the right way to go? I, I, I'm I saying, um, well, I think you've answered the question perfectly reasonably. What are you looking to achieve? What, what, what kind of pitches are you hoping for at Hove? And I think you've given a, 
a perfectly legitimate answer to that. So, okay. no complaints. <laughs> Um, just checking. No, absolutely. <laughs> God, this is the toughest, uh, toughest interview I've had to do for the website for a long time. I'm going to get used to it. 